Well, hello everyone. We are here this morning playing with the smelter, the smelting kiln one more time. Uh, we are just doing some roasting, which should have been on my previous videos. And now we're going to be doing a little bit of smelting of the material that we just roasted. Now we're using the KK8, the Quick Kiln 8 here. Thank you again, Pat from Quick Kiln. And David from 911 Metallurgist for supplying us with this kiln. So we can play with smelting. Dad right now is putting together the charge of the roasted ore. He's getting exactly 30 grams of material in there. And he's got his flux sort of ready to be mixed up into it. And we are going to be smelting an ore from the blue chip mine, which is just sulfides. We've, we've refined it down so it's just the sulfides, not any of the quartz or anything. We've roasted it to make sure it's all uh, nice, uh, good for smelting. We've driven off all of the sulfur. And now we're gonna go through the whole process, the process of smelting with all the right fluxes, and we'll try to explain that along the way to uh, see if there's any gold values in those sulfides. So, smelting Mr. today. Borax. Mr. Borax. You lost your borax. We had borax in what? In a box. Nope, we didn't have borax in a box. We had borax in a little glass jar named borax. That would be it. Smart answer. <coughs> okay. Adding to our flux. Dad's mixing up the flux. What's the first component of the flux here, Dad? Okay. 30 grams of material, ore. 30 grams of ore. 50 grams sodium carbonate. 50 grams of sodium carbonate. And today we have the real sodium carbonate, not just we were using uh, washing soda. 15 grams of borax. Washing soda is sodium carbonate. It's just it's mixed with a few other things. This, this one is the real stuff. It's not mixed with anything. Your spoon. You lost your spoon. Okay. How much borax? 15 grams. 15 grams borax. Should have had these all ready. <clears throat> lead oxide, 100 grams. 100 grams of lead oxide. Also known as litharge. The lead oxide creates the collector metal that uh, will grab onto and hold any gold content, content and drag it to the bottom of the crucible. <laughs> the uh, lethargic lead oxide um, is just simply what it sounds like. It's, it's lead that's been oxidized and when it's in the melt, the flux steals the oxygen off of it, creating pure metallic lead. That pure metallic lead then sort of falls down or rains through the molten solution that's in there and tiny, tiny, tiny particles, but billions of them and as they rain through, any gold that might be suspended in that melt gets captured by the lead and dragged to the bottom. When we're done, we will end up with a chunk of lead in the bottom and that chunk of lead will contain any gold, silver, platinum, any of those kind of things that may have been in that sulfide ore. Ten grams of silica, but, that's already included in the roasting. So but we put silica there. in the roast, so we already have some in there. Do you think you have ten grams of it, though? It's non-reactive in the flux. It's only a protectant to protect the crucible. So it doesn't harm us to have extra. Okay, and there would have been some in the ore as well. Not much, but some in that ore. We're being a bit more careful today making up our flux so we don't screw up like we did last, last time. We put one wrong component in our flux, which made it bubble and boil fairly significantly. Is that it all in there now? That's that. That's that? Okay, so it looks like we have less than half a crucible full. And hopefully it's not going to boil and bubble and do everything like it did last time. Well, so we do actually have nitrates in this one. Too. We have nitrates in this one? That's what bubble, bubbled and boiled it on the last time. That's right. That's why we have extra borax in it for a, a heavier cap. <coughs> but we need this to run the oxides.
Okay, now I'm scared because we almost boiled over last time, Dad. So we're gonna have to have a lid. And flour? No flour in this one. No flour in this one. This is the opposite reaction. Our roasting provides the ox. No. Are you sure here? Yes. Okay. Dad thinks he knows what he's doing. We're gonna go with that. Because <laughs> as far as I know, it's the flour that reduces the lead oxide into lead. What in there is cap is pulling the oxygen off the lead oxide, Dad, in the melt? The ore is now an oxide, it's not a sulfide, so it doesn't have the ability to take any extra oxygen. This was put together, assuming there were sulfides in there. We don't think we've, I don't think we've driven all the sulfides off. We've only done the worst of it. Okay, I'm turning off the camera because Dad and I have to have an argument. <laughs> so we've decided we have made a bit of a mistake in our charge, so we're not actually running it through right now because it will probably boil over on us. Uh, we ended up using a flux that was meant for a sulfide no, no, no. Um, that has not been roasted. So now we have to decide what we want to do because we've mixed it up. Of what we're going to do, if we're going to mix up a new batch using the roasted stuff, if we're going to mix up a new batch using the sulfides, or if we're going to run this and see what happens. <laughs> if we run it and see what happens, we have to run a smaller amount because that will foam. Oh, yeah. We don't want it to froth over. We could use the old crucible, yes, but we don't want to go on the bottom of the kiln, and we would have to add flour to it still. And unfortunately, we'd have to probably add a lot of flour at this point because we put so much oxidizer in there. So, everything we just told you to do, don't do it. Take it back. Take it back. We'll do one proper next. We will have an argument amongst ourselves. So we did decide to run half a half charge here. What we've done is we've uh, separated off half of this and in there, apparently, and we're going to add flour to it. And we're going to add a lot of flour to it to make sure that we have enough reducing power in this to actually pull that lead out of its lead, the lead oxide form. This is not a proper smelt. We no. will do it proper right after this and see if we can, uh, yeah, do it right. We want to see what happens yeah. here. We cut it in half just so that the um, the melt doesn't froth over the edge of the crucible. A double charge of this is 20. There. Twice as much flour as it's supposed to? Basically twice as much as you're supposed to. Okay, this is a practice. This is a warm-up. This is a let's hope we don't spill over in the bottom of the kiln. In the end, I don't even know if I'll conclude this in the video. <laughs> we ready to put it in? Sure. Now lid for it this time. Do we want to put the lid in with it, or do we want to see what's happening before we put it on? I think we want to see what's happening and maybe put the lid on after. So we're heating it much slower today than we did last time, because last time we tried this, wasn't well, on camera last time, um, we heat it too fast and it frothed a lot, and splattered a lot, and probably reduced the life of the kiln a lot. Oh yeah, there's room for that lid in there. If we see it starting to do something, we'll just drop the lid on it real quick. Although I do see it doing something right now, I do see some things popping around on the surface. So maybe we want to get that on, because if, it, if it's a piece of the silica or borax or something. Oh yeah, starting possible. to do something. You know, it's a flower blowing around. We have gloves. 
didn't need it. So this is going to take the same. Now we think this is going to take the same as the black sand. Those leaves keep. Okay. More cloudy. So we think we need the black sand flux now, eh? Yeah. In his book, he had the three different types of flux. Yep. This is the third. Yeah. This is the oxide. oxidizing ones. With the lid on it, we can't see if it is foaming over, like if it gets close to the top, and we want to sort of panic abort. We can't tell. Well, I mean, we could, we can always take quick looks. Let's have a quick look. Let's get some good flames. Spitting a lot, yeah. yeah. Our temperature in there is down below the 900, but you were supposed to bring it up to 900 and hold it there. Okay, so the roasted ore, how much we got for roasted ore? How much does you want to do? We'll see what we got. I would like to do a full 30 gram charge if we have it. Still. Maybe close. No, we're not. What we got? 28. Okay. We'll call it 30. That's the 30 before we drove off the sulfur. Because that's what we were supposed to draw. So 30 and a lot of oxide, we needed 100. Have you done any hunting around? Have you done any hunting around to find this in quantity? Not yet. I'm, yes and no. Yes, um, but not. Yes, but unsuccessfully. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we get in the states. Yeah, and which is we're going to see. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm driving right by these guys. So we've been 15 minutes at the uh, lower temperature. Dad just turned it up to crank it up. We were at 50 minutes at 900, and then where we go from there? 15 to 20 minutes at 1,000. 15 to 20 minutes at 1,000. Yeah. And uh, we've been looking in periodically, and we do see some melt happening. But now we've got up to 1,000. It should start happening faster. Again, this is the bad charge. Half of the bad charge. We're being more, we'll be more careful with the next one, even though I said we'd be more careful with the first one. <laughs> okay, so it looks like things are going well. Dad's just going to take the, the lid off the crucible here. That's filling it. Bit of radiant heat there, eh? It <laughs> started burning the table, the table. from a distance. This is a radiant heat, holy cow. Well, I stole our fire brakes to draft control. Right. How long have we been now? We have to go to 22. 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes at that, and then we can pour? Is that? 10 more minutes we can pour. Perfect. Only just over a thousand degrees nicely. I've assembled the uh, cupel furnace. Yeah, it's working on the cupel furnace over here. As you can see, it hasn't fired yet, so we will have to do its break in. I don't know if we'll get to coupling today, but uh, might as well get it all ready just in case. This is the uh, Quick Kiln 2, but the cupel version of it which is uh, specially designed with a little taper around here so that you can put a cupel in, get it up to temperature nicely, then pull this lid off, although I'm not sure if you keep the lid on. Anyhow, uh, the flame will follow this taper out 
like a rose, like a flower, letting the air come in the top and expose the molten lead to oxygen so it'll oxidize. That's the theory <laughs> behind it all. Are we going to fire it up and just let it uh, break I'm just, in? I'm just reading the instructions. Okay. Yeah, it's got one of the torches lit right now, and it's just slowly heating up uh, the little people in the kiln and uh, tempering those bricks because we have to remember they have to shrink. They have to heat up, shrink, and we have to tighten all those clamps to make them all held together nicely. So, it's a long process. Get started. Well, we still melt. Too hot on the hand. Hmm? Too hot on the hand. We didn't get a mirror. We're supposed to get a mirror We're so we can look to get in. A mirror, right? We are too hot in the kiln too, but once we've got a heat saturation, it, it maintains pretty easily. You might be too low. It's yeah, fluffing. Okay, Dad's. We're almost done with the first charge, so Dad's got the second charge all ready to go here, and we're actually doing this one right, because what we did the first time was not right, not right at all. So he's got uh, the proper recipe ready to go for an oxide ore. For an oxide ore. Unlike we did the first time where we actually did a sulfide recipe, even though it was an oxide ore. So, okay, so he's got 30 grams of the concentrates the roasted concentrates. How much? 50 grams of, sodium, of what? sodium carbonate. Sodi 50 grams of sodium carbonate. 100 grams lead oxide. 100 grams lead oxide. Lethargy. Lethargy. Yeah, we'll right. deal, with, deal with that later. Hit the glass against the metal. That's always yeah. good for it. 25 grams borax. 25 grams of borax. Flour. Oh, sorry. Silica. Silica. 10 grams of silica. We cut the silica in half because there's a lot of silica in the mix already. And our flour. How much? 10 grams. 10 grams of flour. And now we'll mix it up really carefully. This time around, we should have done it right, I think. We've done three well, we've done two smelts. So far both of them are wrong. This one, third time lucky, let's hope. Using a new crucible this time. about my beard. I, I appreciate the concern. So far I still have it. <laughs> I think this is probably better move with the gloves. I don't want to drop that very easy. Are we all ready to go here? You have my gloves. Where are your gloves? Because right. I can't lift them off with my bare hands.
We definitely had a flaw in the system somewhere because we ended up with a chunk of something unsmelted that sort of just fell out and landed on the surface. So I think what we're going to have to do is just let this cool a little bit so it hardens, take everything, throw it back in, and let it go a little longer, and hope. <laughs> but that also could be because we had so much oxidizer in there. This is our goof up. This or, is, yep. This is the result of screwing up the flux. Do we want to, or do we just want to put this all back in and get hot again? Let's go with that. Let's go with putting it back in, pump it in there, we can create a pulse. This is heavy. Remelted already. Well, it was pretty hot still. Yeah. <laughs> it remelted and it covered that thing down. It doesn't look like much material. Well, we ran into that before. And you know, a 30 gram load, we're going to have a problem putting in that mold. <laughs> we'll have to use both probably. Yeah. It'd be nice if we could get all the lead into one and the flux in the other. Yeah. Okay, so our first charge has screwed up. Because we had the wrong fluxes for sure, we end up with this piece of solid stuff that just did not do what it was supposed to do. Now we do have a good, uh, a good core over here. We saw lots of lead go down with it. So we'll still have... There was still lead Well, there's it. still some lead there too. Yeah. So we will still have enough to go and test to see what it did. See if there was gold in it. Yeah. Run it through a coupel and whatnot. But it wasn't complete. I think we have a, I think we have a crazy silicon there. Okay. Know, who knows? I think we just had too much oxidizer in there, and we didn't actually reduce everything we were supposed to. This next one will be right. Yeah, we I guarantee it. <laughs> Doesn't want to break easily. Peter, we got some little uh, lead beads up in the flux. Yep, I see that. Good on the ground, so we don't bash the table too much. chunk of lead with flux stuck to it. So it wouldn't break. See, it's just de deforming. But for... It's a solid piece of lead. I think I need the battery. Twice what we should have. <laughs> More than what we should have. Well, no. Not true. We have a probe that's twice as much weight as we expected, if not three times as much. But we don't know how much metal we put. It means it's loaded in gold, <laughs> right? Loaded in gold. We have to get off all that flux somehow to... I think it's 
much like lead. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're gonna be okay, actually. I think we're led. <laughs> but, for reducing this in the cupola, I think we have to cut it in half. It's 40 grams. Yeah. It's a 50 gram uh, cupel. It should be able to take all the lead. Correct. It should be able to take its weight in lead. Correct. And we're hoping that half of that is gold, too, right? Correct. <laughs> Okay, so now we will put the cupelling process in a separate video all by itself um, because it's just too much to add into one video. Okay, so I'm just going to set that in there. And I'm gonna go we still back. have we still have to tighten those clamps and everything on that. Oh, that's correct. We will do more on smelting, and eventually I want to do a. a a video of a single rock from a single mine taking it all the way through crushing, refining, or concentrating, uh, roasting, smelting, and then cupelling all in one rock so you get to see the whole process. But uh, we're just doing a little bit of smelting today, a couple of smelts of roasted material. Roasting I did last day, hopefully you saw that video. And uh, right now we don't have a gold to show you because the gold is in the prills. Prill, right? Prill. Prill. Prills. And that was done with the KK8 kiln from Pat at Quick Kiln. Thank you to Pat for sending me this for playing with. And to Dave at 911 Metallurgist, our Canadian supplier, who set it all up. Capelling won't be till the spring, so. I won't say until then because I know I'll do things between now and then, but uh, I'm sure I'm do out to do some prospecting soon. Those will have videos compelling in the spring. Until then, bye!